then of course your body gets very frustrated because your consciousness and your spirit want to move forward. They know it knows, and they know it knows. All of these these uh, entities within ourselves, which is part of our oneness and beingness, knows we're supposed to be progressing into the next order, the next order of the ages, the new order of the ages. But, you know, they get blocked. And a lot of folks that aren't very enlightened, this blockage, along with bad food habits, creates a huge amount of depression. So when all this depression sets in, uh, people have to go to the drugstore and get pharmaceuticals, all kinds of effectors and, and, and Zoloft and, and all these drugs to cover up this growth of consciousness and this pain that's being created in this growth as it's being met by ELF and all these bad frequencies. Once again, the laser becomes very important because it will burn a hole through all these energies. That's why the pterodyne, for example, we've been, you know, putting lasers into our products for over 30 years, 30 years. If you were to come into my house, you would probably find at least 30 to 35, maybe 35, 40 lasers in here, all in different applications and all colors of the rainbow. Now, the next thing is, obviously something else is going on. Well, the solid state laser came along, what's called an NPN or NP junction laser. Okay, these lasers came along. It was discovered that rather than reflecting uh, light with the, uh, you know, with the advance of semiconductors, rather than having to have big tubes and big, big lights and pumping mechanism, we could actually put a bias on a substrate and produce photons from actual substrate uh, material very similar to what's in a transistor. And hence, we had the birth of what's called the dial laser. Dial laser got such a point that the red lasers, you can buy them from Newark Electronics, the bare diode itself, which will emit a small amount of energy, up to 5 milliwatts, for around 12 or $13. So now we went from something that I started uh, doing years ago, actually a 1 milliwatt laser was $1,000 when we first brought it on the market. Now you can get a 5 milliwatt laser for under $10. So the price dropped. And then if you go on eBay and all these different places, you see all these Chinese companies coming on board. Well, one of the next things that we did, going back, I'm going back again, a little bit back into the past. Um, when, we, when we discovered that the laser beam was important, we wanted to, uh, in our programming devices, like in our radiator systems, we wanted to actually program crystals like a master crystal. So I went to a friend of mine who worked for the Department of Defense, and I found out that the um, government had already been programming uh, crystals with a code through a computer. So, and they were using what's called a scanner, meaning that they would type a code into a computer, and then the computer would then uh, send uh, energy to a scanner. And what a scanner is, is, is two little mirrors. One moves up and down, and one moves left and right that were uh, connected from the output of the laser, and then they would bounce directly into the crystal. And so they were programming master crystals through a very simple encoded system. So I was able to get my hands on that and develop a system which we sold here for a long time until my friend over in Las Vegas where he produced these things, was uh, he disappeared one day. He had to go, I guess, full-time in DOD, and he could no longer make them. So we were making these boxes. They were amazing. You could actually program a... Um, a, a, a system. So then I talked to Fred Lord. Fred Lord was over there, and they were, if you remember the old laser shows, the beam moves around in the audience. It doesn't just sit there. It, it moves around. It jumps from point A to point B. Well, he was using a electro, you know, electro uh, uh, magnetic scanner system. And so we decided, well, what, what can we do to um, um, bring this out to the general public? Well, we, we decided we would try to find some surplus scanners, which we later on did, but in the interim what we had to do is we had to take a small mirror and place it on a radio speaker and then place the radio speaker uh, over the sound, like new age sounds that we were using, and then bounce the uh, energy off the laser from the radio speaker playing new age music into the crystal. And that, of course, was another way of programming it. So we, didn't, we no longer had the NSA codes, but now we were able to do something that actually in the long run seemed to work better. Well, then a couple of companies down in St. Louis got the idea. They saw what we were doing, and they started making some very inexpensive uh, scanners. Today, um, all over the Internet, you can find uh, lasers and scanners and, and all kinds of things uh, that do all of this now. Literally, 
couple of hundred companies around the world are making these products. That just goes to show you where we set the trend, and now the whole world is getting on board. And, of course, the prices have dropped on um, green lasers now. You can get a pretty nice one for two or $300. Uh, blue lasers are still expensive, and violet lasers, uh, which are considered uh, uh, the most expensive, still quite rare. And to give you an idea what the frequencies are, the red lasers run in the 600 nanometer area. The green lasers run in the 500 nanometer area. And the blue lasers run from about 472 nanometers down to 402 nanometers, which is ultraviolet. So sometimes you'll see a laser for sale that's 800 or 900 nanometers. Well, it's far in for red, and it's not any good for programming crystals. You need something below 656 nanometers to actually see it and get usage out of it. So you get different uh, uh, tints of red. And I'm going to um, I get back over here on the front cover of uh, BBS. I haven't even looked to see if we have anything going on in the fast chat. And uh, with that said, um, I want to bring on um, Steve Barry. Steve, are you there? Yes, I am, Fred. Well, tell us what you've been up to. How'd you like our little laser chat there? Was that good? That was great. That was great. I've yeah. been doing a lot of work with um, the projectors. Yeah. And um, I called um, a lot of people that uh, have been calling me. I think a good friend of yours, his name is Dan, Dave uh, Lampert in uh, Houston. Yeah, Canada. he's a former... Former uh, Big Bank of America guy, and he's a uh, former, used to spend a lot of time up there at um, Santa Rosa at the, um, what do they call it, the place up there the, 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 where I'm wishing everybody goes. Right, um, right, 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 right. I, uh, anyway, I work a controversial place. He spent a lot of time in there. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Very, very yeah. nice. He and his wife are very sweet. I talked to them for about an hour today. Yeah, he's a And, um, yeah, we were talking about the uh, projectors and... Um, and the nuclear receptors <clears throat> and, the, and the projectors that we wear. And um, he had a problem with his lungs, and uh, I went in and cleared the lungs. That was the Bohemian Club. That's where he worked. He, he was Bohemian on the go ahead. Club. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. He had a problem with his lungs. He had some problems with his lungs, and um, I changed the uh, DNA structure of his body I've been able to see the DNA come out of the body and actually change the structure of that, so we did that today. Um, and then we got on to more important things. Uh, not that that wasn't not important, but we got on to the uh, nuclear receptors and the projectors. As a matter of fact, I'm experimenting <clears throat> with the projectors now by being able to reach over to people and remotely uh, touch the projectors and um, I actually, uh, Dave actually felt me touching his projector, and I said, you'll be able to feel this energy going down your legs, and he did. So there's a lot to do with the projectors. It's just uh, we're coming into a, a period where our minds are becoming so perceptive and so aware and so powerful. I, I don't think anything could stop it at this particular point right now. Uh, there's a few of us, I think, on the planet, uh, including you, and, and uh, I don't know how many other people. Maybe it could be thousands, but uh, we won't be denied um, our rights to, to use our brains and, and uh, be able to help as many people as we possibly can. Yeah, well, the beautiful thing about all of this is that um, the government, somehow or other, isn't where we're at. They're still studying the changes in DNA and the changes in things when they make one change in the laboratory and they observe the changes that uniformly um, observable through, uh, you know, subatomic physics and measuring networks, uh, anything from a Wilson cloud chamber to an electron microscope. So they're able to uh, make these observations, but, you know, they have no idea about the programming. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing how... We're so far ahead on the programming part. It seems yeah, it's just I, I find it amazing that the frequencies that we're using uh, to heal people, uh, I mean, I've seen them and I've worked with them, um, you know, talk about changing uh, the colors into blue rays or yellow rays or red rays. It's, it's very possible to do with the mind. And I, I believe the mind is the, op the ultimate... Uh, uh, a piece of equipment that we have that will uh, outstand everything. I mean, I don't think there's anything more important than the universe.